Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shoulder Tap on this lovely Tuesday, June 18th, 2024. I'm Jack, and I'm joined by risk manager Ben. Uh, ben, how is the day going for you? Um, it's going well. Busy, busy. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, a good Tuesday overall. Excited to dig into some of our uh, traders, what they're trading, um, how they're doing on the day. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it, Jack. Should we jump right in? Well, yeah, I mean, Mick's gallivanting around Europe, so why don't we just get down to business, unless there's anything you want to talk about on the board that's happening outside the cards, or? Yeah, yeah, we can give a, a quick rundown um, of how our live traders are doing. Um, seeing a lot of good uh, good activity today. Um, I think today's one of those days it really depends on what instrument you're trading, because um, there's been a lot of chop. If that's your, your uh, trading style, you like those conditions, it's been a good day for it. Um, and a few markets have been trending as well. So pretty product dependent, but uh, some of our, our winners today, uh, we've got MP up a cool 2,200 bucks. Uh, love seeing that. He's been carving it up. Um, Nick for a tick also up uh, 2,400 bucks. Justin K up three grand. Uh, Donald up 2,700. Francisco up uh, 2,300 and David W up 3,500. So um, lots of, Good size winners today. Um, happy to see a lot of those PLs steady. So they hit two or three grand and haven't moved much since earlier in the day. Um, today is one of those days and really one of those weeks, I think, with a market holiday right sandwiched in the middle of the week on Wednesday um, and rollover and all of the other you know factors that, that go into this week. Uh, it's good to take money when you see it and uh, bail out. There's no reason to swing for the fences this week. I know we've uh, spoken a lot about that, but just to, to echo and reiterate that, like seeing uh, people go up money in the morning and, and uh, keep it all day long, not trade additionally beyond that. So um, yeah, good stuff. We can uh, move into some trading cards, uh, do kind of some deep dives. Um, first card we have today is going to be someone all too familiar with the Top Stuff TV audience, uh, okay. Dakota. We're going to talk about Dakota's account today. And I know Dakota's on often talking about his trading, talking about his strategies, his highs and his lows. But I thought it'd be helpful to go into um, some of the statistics and then some of uh, some recent pattern, recent patterns that we've seen with Dakota as well. So um, if you aren't familiar with Dakota, I'm not sure how much TV you've been watching, but um, he's one of our excellent uh, live funded traders. He's trading at 150K uh, live account, trading with us from Utah. And... Uh, was just on this morning. He talked about how he had taken uh, that daily loss limit in his live account, um, had also taken the daily loss limit on uh, Friday. And so uh, really for the month of June, we've seen a bit of a deviation from Dakota, um, you know, had some profitable days, but those days have been a little bit smaller than the daily loss limit. Whereas, um, especially in May, where he was just crushing the cover off the ball, you know, um, having that higher DLL didn't really matter because he was taking home, you know, 20 or 30 grand at a time. So um, slight change recently that we've seen, you know, taking uh, more frequent loss limits, but most importantly, not really outpacing those DLLs uh, with the big winning days. So um, just an interesting trend there. But overall, Dakota's got 87 trading days completed in this live account, which is excellent. Um, very close to that, that 90 day mark. Um, and the whole times look healthy, you know, holding winners longer than losers. Uh, he's very good about letting uh, those winning trades play out, scaling out of them, um, you know, over a period of time and into profit. 60% uh, winning days and 52% winning trades with a greater than one-to-one -one, uh, reward over risk ratio. Uh, that spells out profitable trading. So very uh, simple formula. If you're winning more than you're losing, um, Per trade and you're winning more trades than you are losing trades, uh, you're going to be making money. Dakota's uh, a great example of that. It'll show 14 trades per day. Uh, just the way the system calculates that, that's also scaling in and out. So it's not exactly like he's taking, you know, 14 trade ideas per day, uh, but he's scaling in and out of those positions as he talks about often when he uh, dives into his trading strategy. So, um, you know, the numbers look good from a thousand foot view. But again, zeroing in recently, and particularly the trading activity uh, for June, uh, he's you know I think slightly red for the month of June, and uh, you know we're going to be have been in communication. We you know spoke with him yesterday um, about where the daily loss limit is at, about where the uh, current risk parameters are set to, um, and we may be making a change to that you know soon. We want to see Dakota finish the month uh, green because I'm very thankful that he's constantly uh, speaking about this. It's really important to look at your trading. 
um, either by large quantities of trades overall or by trading um, months and even quarters. Um, that's how you're gonna get a really good perspective for how your strategies are performing um, and breaking that down even more granularly into what strategies work and what conditions and what's working right now versus uh, what was working, you know, last month or the month before. So um, we know Dakota is capable of putting up big numbers. It's about managing the downside first and foremost. Um, and so want to continue monitoring that and working with him about mitigating the losses there. Um, but ultimately just needs to stay the course. Don't let a few losing days or, you know, even being red on the month, halfway through the month, uh, get to your head. Um, I also saw he's been taking a lot of trades in uh, trading combines and, and uh, you know, for other people that might be a practice account trade. That's really healthy, especially if you're kind of treading water, maybe on a losing streak, um, going and trying out different strategies, um, pivoting. You have to be nimble. You have to be dynamic in markets because, again, what worked yesterday or even what worked in the morning may not work in the afternoon. Um, so being flexible, being curious, being dynamic um, and trying things out in lower risk accounts. And then if that's working out, I know Dakota has been workshopping those gold trades um, in slow markets. Love seeing that. Um, you know, if that continues to play out as expected, um, definitely take some of those trades in the live account as well. Um, start building some cushion back up and, and getting to uh, working back towards those account balance highs um, long term. So just wanted to go into some statistics, talk about where Dakota's at, where he's been. Um, ultimately, he's taken one hundred thirty eight thousand dollars of payouts in this account. That's money that his, hit his actual bank account after profit splits and everything out else. So uh, 138 grand in payouts uh, since, since May 7th is, um, don't have a lot of words for it, fantastic trading, uh, very highly profitable trading and love that you're paying yourself regularly, Dakota. And it uh, sounds like taking that money and putting it in investments and stuff for, uh, for long term. So good on you, um, setting the example and I uh, love to see it. Anything uh, that you picked up on looking over Dakota's trade reports or from this card, Jack? Yeah, I mean, we've all seen Dakota trade. We know what he does. If you have a sample of 87 trading days and your average P&L is 1500 bucks, that's pretty good. Really good, as a matter of fact. Uh, one thing right. I'd like to point out is we do have backwards people point out in the card. And this is confusing here. In top set, we talk about reward to risk. But the phrase I've always heard is risk to reward. So yes, those should be reversed there. It should say reward to risk ratio is greater than 1.4 to 1. Um, but I don't know about you, Ben. I always find myself wanting to say risk to reward because that's the idiom I've always heard it phrased as. So that's what he's yeah, doing yeah. there. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah, a matter of like genetics, you know, just the way that it rolls off the tongue. It's a little bit easier said risk reward. Uh, generally speaking, you know, uh, traders know what that means. But yeah, to be very specific, and I think I even typed that out. So maybe it's something we uh, talk with production about. But yes, uh, making 1.4 for every uh, one that you risk is, is the correct way of outlining that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Dakota's doing awesome. And uh I think as far as the stats go, I, people point out that Dakota said he's like wins a quarter of his trade. That goes back to it's difficult. The definition of what a trade is to you uh, is different than what will show up if we just look at the contract, right? Uh, yeah. Because someone Dakota that we know will add to winners, will trail things. That will kind of skew what it is there. But I would take his word that he's about, you know, 30% winners or something like that, but just does a lot of stuff around them. So great card, good stuff. I see NVIDIA is the biggest company in the world now, Eddie said. What a day to be alive. All right. Incredible. We've got next, Ben. <laughs> um, next up, we've got uh, Brian. Should be Brian B. So um, Brian uh, it was one of our live funded traders um, and was off border from the live account for uh, breaching the maximum loss limit after a um, total of 25 trading days completed. So um, we're going to do an autopsy here and talk about what was working, what wasn't in this live account. Um, if you're new, just joining us, you know, you get called up to a live account that speaks to who you are as a trader and your skills um, in and of itself. You have to clear a certain threshold to get into a live account. So we know Brian can trade profitably. Um, far too often we'll see people get into live accounts and uh, maybe deviate from the strategies 
trade new symbols that they're not accustomed to, trade with larger size, um, just make some change from what uh, we see in the XFA. And, you know, there's something deeper happening there psychologically. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but, um, you know, sometimes we see changes there. And, and Brian has, uh, you know, changed from what he was doing the XFA into uh, the live account. And that's reflected in a, an average daily P&L that's negative. So um, mm -hmm. losing on average $472 a day. The winning day percentage is, you know, right around 50% at 44%. Uh, the problem is those losing days are uh, overshadowing the winning days. So losing 1900 on the average losing day uh, versus only winning almost $1,400 on the average winning day. So um, that makes it difficult. You're, you know, kind of on a, a downhill slope um, day after day when you're trading in that manner. But additionally, that uh, reward to risk ratio, we've got to correct on this card, um, is, you know, 0.3 to 1. So only making 0.3 for every one that you're risking, um, you've got to be very, very highly accurate with your winning trade percentage. Um, and while 62% is a good winning trade percentage for that type of uh, reward to risk ratio, um, it's not going to cut it. You're going to be losing money over time. You're going to have um, significant, you know, you might have a decent winning streak, but then you're going to, um, you know, give all that back in one or two trades. So, um, you know, there's a lot to say here, a lot of different things. I think um, one element that you can take away from this, uh, Brian, if you're listening, is you know, when you eventually get back on the horse, whether that, you know, I know you have some open trading combines, um, probably a good idea to take a break, but it's really important to um, not just manage your trades that you're in from a, you know, risk reward standpoint and kind of, you know, you want to win more than you lose. You need to manage um, your account from an account level. What I mean by that is um, we are trading futures contracts. Uh, they're highly leveraged. Uh, there is a massive profit potential. There's also massive loss potential. Um, thankfully, with the program that we offer at our proprietary trading firm, um, you're protected in a lot of ways from what you'd be exposed to if you were trading a personal account. But um, there's still a lot of risk associated with this, and you have to manage the account appropriately. Mm -hmm. Some of the ways you can do that, and I recommend this for everyone, is setting a you know profit target for the day setting a loss limit for the day i know in top step x we now have that personal daily uh profit target personal daily loss limit that you can set for yourself i cannot stress enough how important those tools are um, especially for newer and developing traders um, even really experienced traders it's it's vital in my opinion because if you have in your mind just this uncapped profit potential you know I could make, I'm up three grand, I could be up six grand, I could be up 10 grand, you know, I'm up 10 grand, I could be up 20. That mental game you play with yourself can go on forever, right? There's, um, mathematically speaking, no reason you couldn't make a million dollars in a day trading futures. Um, of course, you'd need larger leverage than what's offered in this account. But the point being, you have to keep things uh, realistic and you have to set these uh, structural rules and limits for yourself in your own account. Um, to make sure that you're taking profit out. That would have helped Brian a lot, I believe, in this account. There were two separate days that he was up $3,000 and then up $4,000 on a different day, only to then take uh, the daily loss limit of down $3,000. So having a $6,000 swing in the opposite direction, having a $7,000 swing in the opposite direction, a trading account, um, it can be demoralizing. And it's also um, not only giving up profits, taking a loss on the day. So whatever that is, um, I, I like to keep it realistic. I advise keeping it realistic. You know, if you work a, a job where you make, you know, um, 150 bucks a day or 250 bucks a day, um, you know, maybe set that as your trading um, target for the day. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to allow myself to, you know, shoot for more than $500 of profit in the day. Um, that will help you stay grounded, make sure that you're not, um, you know, trading on, tilt, maybe the other side of tilt trading really greedily. So um, having a maximum number of losing trades that you take in a row, having a personal daily loss limit, all of those things can help you manage your account from the account level, not just on a per trade basis. So um, that's what I'd recommend going forward for Brian when he inevitably, you know, gets back into the swing of things, um, you know, narrow your focus a little bit, figure out what's working, and then have the confidence to put those trades on that you 
have proven to us previously, um, you can do in a, in a profitable way. So um, had to offboard this live account today. We never enjoyed doing that. But ultimately, if you learn from it, it's a positive thing and you'll be able to uh, be better in the future because of it. So um, anything you picked up on from the trade reports here, Jack, I, there's quite a bit of content uh, from, yeah. from this trade. Yeah. There's a, there's a three day stretch that really killed this account. It was right. It's days two, three, four, and the end result of the three days is Brian hit his daily loss limit on all three days. Okay, three thousand dollars. You can't like if you were trading for a professional company or something like that. You cannot. You have a loss limit. If you hit it the first day, you should not hit it the next day. You got to lower it to something like that. And you certainly, certainly should not hit it the third day. Um, you're obviously not seeing it right. And it's especially painful here because I see on that third day is that they had a high P&L of plus 4,300. So I think you, you mentioned this. To have two days with the daily loss limit, have 4,000 on the board, and then swing back seven grand at the daily loss limit, you know, that's not super serious, um, as Mick would say there. Um, yeah. I would say as a rule, unless unless you're someone who's putting up huge days where this, this could be your loss limit anyway, and that's what you trade, like someone like a Dakota or something like that, um, if you hit your daily loss limit, you should not lose that much the next day. And certainly not three days in a row. So that, and then don't give away, you know, don't give away more than half of, if, if, if you're up big, don't start using that as manufactured loss limit. Like suddenly, oh, I'm up four grand. Now I have a seven grand loss limit. That's no bueno. So yeah. think that's about a, it, that's Brian. Amazing. Just. It's a, yeah, that's a losing that's mentality in my estimation. And, and we've used the, you know, we, all the time, we have kind of a catchphrase at Top Step, always trade for tomorrow. That's not just a tagline. It, it really is important to your longevity in this in this game. You know, even for someone like Dakota, trading for tomorrow, you know, not putting on uh, too much size in a, in a trade, you know, that, that maybe is only a B setup or is something that you're just now working out because you say, okay, well, I was down my daily loss limit yesterday and I want to get back, uh, you know, that much the following day. Not to say that Dakota does that per se. I'm just saying even the best traders are so, you know, subject to that type of um, mentality and that shift in mentality. Um, really keeping yourself grounded and focusing on how you maintain the account and how you trade, um, not just for a couple of weeks and looking for a payout, but how are you gonna stay solvent and stay profitable for three months, six months on the year? You know, what is your PL gonna look like for the year? Um, keeping it in perspective and, and truly trading for tomorrow um, would have prevented, I think, that uh, that seven thousand dollars swing the other direction, like Jack had mentioned. So um, it's really and important. One, Go ahead. One Jack. last thing on this too: it's you got to be able to back up if you're going to do the club DLL. You got to be able to make more. I mean, I think the best day in this account was up three grand and change, but they lost three grand and change like six separate occasions that that's not going to work. So yeah, sorry, Brian. Um, it's tough. Learn something from it. I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to kick anyone while they're down. So anyway. yeah, definitely. Again, the good news is we're always here. There's always a new opportunity. Um, thankfully it wasn't your own money. I always, come back to that and we have these offboardings. thank goodness it wasn't your own money that you had lost. Um, and there is an opportunity to recover um, because there's a lot of people that trade their personal accounts who don't have that opportunity to recover because they took major losses. So Brian will be back. Uh, we'll work with him and, and uh, he'll be back soon. I have no doubt. Um, let's go to our uh, final trading card. Um, I've been dwelling on this way too much, how to pronounce this trader's name. I'm going to go with uh, Mikkel. I think it's Mikkel. It's either Mikkel or Michelle probably. Um, Mikkel just got called up, uh, trading with us from Miami, Florida, uh, called up to uh, a live account in 150K uh, XFA. Really fantastic trading uh, that we've seen. And uh, Jack, that, that pivotal 30-day uh, mark, they've traded 36 trading days. So we've got a really nice sample size to reflect on. 
Um, trading the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ, 83% uh, winning days is amazing. 76% uh, okay. winning trades is also really excellent. Um, you tack on the fact that it's a 1.5 to one uh, reward over risk ratio. See, we, this this card's different too. All right, I'll, I'll talk to production about it. We'll make sure we're, uh, we're synced up. Um, no worries. Making 1.5, every uh, one that you risk. Um, and and probably the most uh, awesome aspect of this is really only averaging one trade per day, um, averaging slightly more than one contract per trade. That's just because sometimes every once in a while they'll put on two contracts instead of one. But uh, we've got hour long hold times, uh, three hours for the winners, three hours for the losers. Um, they are going in pre-planning, putting on a trade, having a profit target, and letting the trade work out. Something else I really like, Jack, you'll notice on the, the trade reports, a couple days that they took, uh, you know, a $20, uh, the, the P&L for the day was 20 bucks. Um, that tells me that they are, once the trade moves in their favor a certain degree, they are protecting themselves, they are moving that stop loss to, you know, break even or near break even, and being comfortable taking that, um, you know, scratch day, that $20 day. So um, really, really awesome uh, trading here. $15,000 in payouts taken out of the XFA. Um, love seeing you pay yourself. And uh, super consistent trading volume. And, uh, you know, we want to see that same consistency in that live account. That's my number one takeaway here. Um, we just talked about it on the previous card and how Brian had made some deviations once you moved into the live account, trade this live account in the exact same way that you're trading the XFA. Um, you know, liquidity is not going to be an issue for you because you're trading one contract at a time. Um, go in and really sky's the limit. You know, you put, put up some good numbers, build some consistency in the live account. You're going to be getting a phone call from the risk team. We're going to be talking to you about how we can scale that trading up and how we can get you greater size, greater profitability in these winning trades because Certainly with this uh, body of work in the XFA, you've proven yourself. It's time to move to the big leagues. We want to put uh, live capital in your hands and help you scale that up um, to really take home a, a sizable paycheck um, as often as you'd like once you get past that 30 day uh, mark. So, um, yeah, I know we're bumping up on time, yeah. Jack. Anything you want to you want to pat him on the back, too, or what, what else? Oh, Yes, 100%. So the total contracts on the sheet, right, that's in and out. So if they had one total trade and two total contracts, that's trading one contract. Okay. That's correct, yes. Okay. I need to say this. Yesterday, Mich Michelle, uh, I was listening to how it was pronounced, uh, made $5,640 trading one NQ future. One trade. And then on the 13th, made $2,000 doing the same thing. That's yeah. really freaking good. Like, this is a really clean card. Seems to protect the risk. Trade small, gives himself a lot of room. That's how he gets that moving the stops. Is how he gets to that high uh, winning trade, winning day average. Uh, one contract. That is, we need an award for the best one contract trade. That's got to be up there. That's... Yeah, That's just it's wild. it's awesome, man. You you reverse engineer the math, right? How many t how many points that you had to get out of one contract to achieve that P and L? I mean, taking big big bites out of the market. Um, you know, yesterday is a, a perfect opportunity for that big trend. You know, you just catch. We had a Pin Sin who did the same thing. You know, you just get on the right side of the market in a trending day, and if you can ride it out for a considerable considerable distance, it's an amazing P and L. Um, and, and so. Back to the point about leverage and futures. That's what can happen if you see the market well and trade responsibly. Way to hold that move. I mean, that is 280 points in the NQ. To take one contract and then to just hold it that entire time. That's great. Nothing there. Uh, so good job, Michelle. Hope we uh, size up and really get cooking. But uh, yeah, Ben, thanks for joining. Uh, we got to end right about now because we have David Green and Dolby waiting in the uh, the wings right now to do group coaching. You won't want to miss that. We'll be back later with uh, Power Hour. We'll be showing some quiz winners. It's going to be a good time for everybody. So stick around, and we'll be back with David Green just after this.